Okay, we have John Mechie the third here. He has a welcoming remarks. Oh, hello. Hi, everybody. How's your day going? So, good, good. When you build a championship program, you get a lot of people here. We'll go straight to questions here. Do we have anybody with an opening question? Front row here on your right. Well, I didn't want to start out this way, but uh, I'm Tyler Shaw with uh, KBTX and College Station, so I got to ask uh, about Texas A&M. I just want, do you see them as legit SEC West contenders this year? And could, could the game where you guys go to Kyle Field this year, could that be a big game? Definitely. Um, I definitely think Texas A&M is a good team, and I definitely think they will be good this year. And also playing at their stadium will be, um, will definitely be special. They definitely do have a great atmosphere there. Question to your left here on the front row. Hey, John, Charlie Potter with 24-7 Sports. You guys obviously lost Smitty and Waddle this offseason and added five new receivers. Just what's your confidence level with this new group of guys going into 2021? Uh, through the roof. I think my confidence um, for this new receiver room is just through the roof. I think we have a lot of young and great potential, and I'm definitely excited for everybody to be able to see that and us to go out there and showcase our talents. John, to your right on the second row. John, first off, Suit's phenomenal. Thank you. Thank uh, you. After the A&M game last year, a couple of the Aggies said they thought they were a play or two away from maybe winning that game. From your perspective, did you guys uh, see it the same way? Um, I don't think we saw it the same way. Um, I think um, we went in there with um, a game plan of what coaches wanted us to do, and I think we executed it. Um, probably a couple errors here and there, but I think overall um, it, it was a pretty solid game. Question to your left on the third row. Going into uh, this year, obviously with the fans returning, how important is that for you to have that full stadium? And when you guys went to even Miami, it wasn't a full stadium. Was that different? You excited to get 100% back? Yeah, man. Sheesh. I'm excited for it. Um, I'm definitely excited to um, get a full stadium again, um, have fans back, um, family, um, all of that. I'm definitely excited for that. John, to your right, front row. John, Jared Joseph, Fox 44 in Baton Rouge. Every year, the first week of November gets started on the calendar with LSU and Alabama. The Tigers have a lot of changes with offense and defense. How much of an eye are you going to keep on what they do throughout the season as you guys prepare for them? Um, I honestly don't think I'm going to uh, keep too much of an eye on them during the season. I know what to expect going into them in there. They're going to be a really good team, um, but it's kind of just um, focusing one game at a time. So right now, I think all my attention is probably on Miami and then so on and so forth. Question to your left here on the second row. Hey, John, Jacques Doucet, WAFB TV. Um, people ask, how, how are you guys able to do this? You know, this dynasty that has been Alabama football for all these years. Is it the players holding each other accountable to a certain level combined with what Coach Saban holds you guys to? I mean, just in a few words or sentences, what, how are you able to do this? Um, definitely. I think it's definitely a combination of all of those um, with Coach Saban and the players. Um, I think it's um, the principles and values of the place, the standard that we have um, of discipline, toughness, commitment, um, effort, pride, all of those, and kind of just um, the players, um, us wanting to be great on um, just being competitive and holding ourselves to that standard. Question on your right in the back row. John, Matt Trent, WBRZ TV in Baton Rouge. Um, how does Alabama handle, if you guys have one, quarterback competitions? Because it seems like when one great one leaves, another one is just plugged in. And from our perspective, we never really hear anything about an Alabama quarterback competition. How is that handled in practice and just throughout the year? There definitely, um, there definitely is. Um, I think especially this year we have a really good room with um, Bryce, Paul, Jalen, and I think they're all doing a really – great job. Um, I think they're all making really big strides and um, I'm excited for that room. So um, I'm excited to see um, how well they come along um, and just excited for the season with them. To your left here in the third row. Hey John, Ben Bobick, WRCB in Chattanooga. With Bill O'Brien running the offense now coming from the NFL, how have you guys been adjusting to how he likes to operate and do things? Um, it's been pretty cool. Um, having Sark as a great um, offensive coordinator this past season, but now again, Coach O'Brien, I think everybody knows who he is and um, what he does. And um, definitely excited, and it has been fun seeing um, him collaborate with the Alabama offense. So definitely excited for a, a season of that. Stay on your left in the second row. 
Hey, John, Nikki from Atlanta CW69. Um, Chick-fil-A kickoff is coming. What excites you the most about going up against that Miami defense, and especially probably a new defense with Manny Diaz at the helm? I'm definitely excited. Definitely, They're definitely going to have a good defense, a good offense, a good team. Um, but I think most excited just to take the field with the guys, um, knowing all the work that we put in thus far and all the work that we're going to put in going into camp. Um, I'll definitely be excited to finally um, hit the field and finally get to play. Question to your right on the third row. Lyndon Blake, Way 31 Huntsville. Hey, John, with Saban hinting at how much money some of the players are making off NIL, has there been any jealousy in the locker room? Um, I, think, I think there has been a lot of um, – I think everybody is aware that as long as we continue to do what we do on the field, um, we'll be able to continue to make um, more and more opportunities for ourselves off the field. To the right here in the front row. Hey, John, Kate Thomas, WFB TV, Baton Rouge. Coach Saban mentioned kind of the evolution of the strength and conditioning process. He says because of the technology that you guys have these days, y'all are able to kind of cut things out because he does know how fast you guys run and they can kind of track all that. So how has the technology and the strength and conditioning staff kind of helped evolutionize you guys? Definitely, I definitely think um, the technology and the science of it um, has definitely um, helped us a lot take strides in football and um, seeing um, just kind of how we get better every week. Um, we kind of just see it week in and week out and trusting the process of the new way of uh, training. So um, we definitely see the results of it. To your left here in the back row. Hey, John, Rex Castillo from WRB on Columbus, Georgia. Uh, Bryce Young saw some action last year, but obviously with Mac taking most of the snaps uh, throughout the season. What did you see from him? I know that he had limited stats throughout the 2020 season, but how excited are you for what he can do heading into this camp? Um, I'm definitely excited for Bryce. Um, you kind of see that uh, he had um, an awareness out there. Um, he had all the tools. Um, so definitely, definitely, com definitely excited to see him get comfortable in there and uh, play his game. To the right here in the front row. John, what's kind of the outlook of the, the offense? I mean, you're, are you guys expecting to be as dynamic as you were last year? And with you know, your teammate Devontae last year winning the Heisman as a wide receiver, is that kind of encouraging, motivating for what can be accomplished? Um, I definitely think it's an example of seeing um, what happens when you buy in and do all the little things and are committed to it. Um, as far as the offense, absolutely. Um, definitely expect us to be as dynamic, if not more dynamic, this season. So I'm definitely looking forward to it. Question in the back on the left. Hey, John, talk about uh, you're the number one option now at wide receiver. What did you learn from guys like Devontae and Waddle uh, and some of the others before them that you'll pass on to some of the freshmen coming up this year? Um, learned a lot. Um, Learned a lot of how to um, handle yourself off the field and on the field, but also learned a lot in the game of football, a lot of minor details, and I think it's a lot of those little details that I'd be able to pass on. Question here on the left, second row. Hey, John. Um, Atlanta has witnessed a lot of outstanding wide receivers come through the city. Calvin Johnson at Tech. I mean, Julio, Calvin. What's the legacy that you want to leave knowing that you're having an amazing opportunity this year? Um, I'm definitely excited for the opportunity, and I'm aware of all the great receivers that have definitely come through. Um, and I definitely think that if I continue to try and be the best version of myself, that when I look back at it, I, I'll be satisfied. Two final questions. The first in the back on the right. John, I don't know how many times you've gone up against him one-on-one, -on -one, but what's it like going up against Derek Stingley these past couple of years? Um, he's definitely a really good player. Um, everybody knows who he is as well. Um, he's definitely really good, and um, definitely they definitely have a really good defense as well as a whole. So um, I think their whole team should be really good this year. Okay, before the final question, again, Coach Saban is coming up in a few minutes. We want to take care of as many people as we can, so please, to the best of your ability, keep your questions concise and no double part questions. And we want to keep a nice path like we did when John came in here so it's easy access. We'll take our final question right here in the front. Yeah, John, you guys added Jamison Williams to your wide receiver room from Ohio State. Just what are your early impressions of him and what he can bring to the offense this fall? I think, I think it'll be exciting. I think um, he'll only make the offense more dynamic. Um, JMO definitely will bring a lot of speed to the offense. Um, so I'm definitely excited to see how the offense is with him in it. John, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for having me.